Hi, welcome to the third video in my series of the Ten Commandments. I'm not going to do them in order because I've already done the Ten Commandments in order on my Bobby Peggy show, but this is a little bit different. Um, when things happen to us, we can find solutions in the Ten Commandments. And today I'd like to talk about how God doesn't expect us to be perfect. Sometimes he doesn't heal us, as some religions promise. So many self-help programs are about how to be the best. Number one, they set up a scenario where we're in constant competition with others. Who has more? Who looks better? Who feels better? Who's stronger? Almost a survival of the fittest. But that's why we constantly compare ourselves with others. The Torah teaches us that life is a process and that all we can do is compare ourselves with ourselves and see that we can be a little better each and every day. Some days it feels like we've gone backwards to where we, from where we were, but as our rabbi taught us, when we walk with the Creator, we're on an upward spiral. We take two steps forward and only one step back. Each of us is unique. If we truly understand that, then there would be no need to put ourselves down or anybody else. All we need to do is our best. Let's accept that we sometimes make mistakes and we fail like others do. Our parents failed us, can fail us, because they're human. So can our friends. But we must always leave the door open to make things right, to apologize and to start again. That's what our Torah teaches us. That's called teshuva. The issue as usual is focus. Where is our focus? When we're feeling low or upset, stop and ask, where am I putting my attention? On what? If it's only on myself, it's so easy to drown in a glass of water, so easy to have a pity party, but all and that moment, all the worst things about us are magnified. So what do we do? First, let's begin by telling ourselves, acknowledging who we believe in, that the Creator is real. Have you ever doubted His existence? Some people don't think He's anything but a figment of our imagination. Some think He's out there somewhere, but we're on our own, left to our own devices to figure things out. It's as if we're looking up with one eye, one eye open, one eye closed, wondering, is there some sign that he's real, that he exists, and that he's going to get us out of this mess or this predicament that we're in? Well, bad things happen. Hard things happen to us. And it's usually so we can learn to trust in him. At that moment when we're down or afraid, stop. Think back, even for a moment, to remember everything that he's done for us in the past. That's the beauty of the stories of the Torah. Even if you can't remember one thing in that moment about what he did for you, you have read things that he did not only for our people, in the history of our world and our planet. If we believe in these stories, we're all set. But what if you don't believe in them? What if you don't believe they actually happen? No problem. Have you ever learned something from a good story, a story with a moral, even if it didn't happen to you or someone you know, but you did learn something good nonetheless? Our Torah is filled with stories. They elaborate on how people applied the Ten Commandments to their lives. What happened when they obeyed and what happened when they didn't? I started out by saying how we compare each ourselves with others. When we're a teenager, unless we've had very healthy parents who help us get through tough times, we struggle with how we look, how others see us, how dumb we feel. Emotions are running through us like an ocean. Even adults feel these same things. But usually at 12 for a girl and 13 for a boy, these emotions are heightened because we're becoming an adult, now responsible before God for our thoughts and our actions. No matter our age, if we look at the ninth commandment, 
Do not bear false witness against your neighbor. That also applies to us. Am I bearing false witness against myself? Am I believing lies or wrong things about myself that were placed there by others? You didn't do it on purpose, but these things happen. Again, back to focus. If I focused on how God created me, in Genesis it says, he formed man from the dust of the earth. And he said, very good. He didn't say perfect. It said, very good. That means we have room to make mistakes. We should learn from our mistakes. Don't ever be afraid to make them. If we're not making mistakes, we're not doing anything worthwhile. Now let's take time to stop and think about what it says in Psalm 139. Search me, O God, know my heart, test me, know my thoughts, see if there's any wicked way within me and lead me in your everlasting way. That was our rabbi's favorite psalm. Every time we pray this to God, he has a way of revealing those things within us that need to be corrected. Be willing to go through it when he does reveal them. It can feel like Jacob wrestling all night with a man, but he won and his name was changed to Israel. You will prevail and you will come out the other side a newer and better person than before. I wonder what our new name will be. It's a long, lifelong process. It doesn't lead us to perfection in this life, but it helps us to pr improve every day. When something about, our, something about ourselves is revealed in this process, don't hold on to it as if it were the precious in the Lord of the Rings, but be willing to go through a paradigm shift, to change your way of, of looking at it as it, when it comes to the light and let it go. God even helps us with that. That's where the relationship with our creator and following his commandments is the best of all earthly systems. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to press the subscribe button so that you won't miss any of our videos are so important in these crazy times because the Torah is the truth. Please support us financially so that we can continue to bring these lessons to you. Thanks and have a wonderful day.